Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. We're actually going to kick things off with a friend of the network, uh, my buddy Daniel Rubino, who is at the, uh, now i got to get it right, Windows Central. <laughs> That's right. Yep. No more P. Nope. It's just windowscentral.com. <laughs> uh, but Daniel is an expert on uh, on Windows phones, all things Microsoft, and he has the new Microsoft. You know, I call it a watch. It does tell you the time, but it's really more of a sport band, right? The Microsoft it, band. Yeah, it crosses a lot of boundaries. So I got it right here. One of uh, a few of them that are out there in the market, and it's definitely. Uh, a device that's not quite a smartwatch, but not quite a fitness band. It's a little bit of everything. And I think because of that, it makes a real interesting device, at least from Microsoft. It looks funny. And I know uh, Paul Therott has kind sure. of complained, and I've read others, in fact, your review as well, that says you never really get used to having it on your wrist. Yeah, so... I'm a little cautious on this because I think it's just like shoes. Some people find a pair of shoes comfortable. Some people don't find it comfortable. Uh, when it comes to this, it's a little larger than, say, your typical Fitbit. I'm a big Force user, and so I love using uh, those kind of devices. I also wear a watch. So for me, having things on my wrist isn't a big deal. Uh, but, yeah, some people have an issue with this and don't like the constriction. Uh, it also know, doesn't curve. It's straight. Yeah, and so I don't. I don't personally find it any different than any other wearable I've ever put on, and I have okay. no problem sleeping with it. But some people do. So it's one of those things, if you uh, have a Microsoft store, definitely go try it. Yeah. Uh, I hear by through the holiday season, it'll be at Microsoft stores, but then it's going to go to retailers. So you should be able to go to a Best Buy, for instance, and pick this up too, and probably in a couple of weeks or a month or so. What does your girlfriend think? So she's like really small. She's about five foot three, like 110 pounds. She loves it. She actually thinks it's like one of the, of all the technology I have, and I have a ton of it, she doesn't find any of that impressive. But this thing, she really, really How likes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, and she's tiny, and she has no problems wearing it and absolutely loves it, mostly because she can do her phone stuff without pulling the phone out from the pocket. So it's the functionality she really likes. Right. Tell yeah. me about that. What does it do? So it does do fitness stuff. So it has a heart rate monitor on board, which is optical, and that's sort of really interesting. But we're seeing that more. That's becoming more frequent uh, these days with these fitness devices. It has GPS built in, which only comes on if you're going into run mode, and even then it's optional. So if you're going to run on a treadmill, you don't need to put it on and you know waste the battery. Uh, it has all sorts of smartphone functions, which work across the iPhone, Android, and Windows phone. So you can uh, see incoming calls. You can see email, text messages. Uh, you can see the current weather. You can, if you're using Windows Phone, you can invoke Cortana directly through it, and even like dictate a text message, for instance. And so it does. And probably one of the more unique things it has a UV sensor, which is kind of interesting. So it has a little light sensor on top, and you can basically sample the sunlight, and it'll tell you how basically how intense the UV rays are, and about how what the average is you'll get sunburned. That's unique. Yeah. So it, I think it brings a lot of unique stuff to the market, uh, at least this early stage. It also gets about two uh, days battery life, ah. which it, which comes in around around 36 hours. I wouldn't say it's actually 48 hours. But the good thing is, is it can charge to 80% in 30 minutes. So what I've been telling people is, and it makes sense, you just when you before you go in the shower, throw it on the charger. By the time you're done, you'll have your charge for the day with no issues. That's just about right, actually. Yeah, while you're getting ready in <laughs> yeah. the morning and it's all charged up so you can wear it continuously. You wear it yeah. at night, too. Right. So it has a sleep mode to it, which, uh, you know, it's once again, it's common with these sort of trackers. It determines um, during the night, it'll measure your heart rate will also determine how much you're moving. And then in the morning, it gives you a very detailed graph as far as your sleep goes. Now, I was a sleep technician for a few years in New York City. You were? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So I'm very familiar with sleep technology and the science behind it. And my own intuition so far of this is it's actually goes very well with what I think my sleep has been in the sense that it detects when you're obviously moving around, but also a deep sleep and light sleep. So it separates those two and then gives you a rating for it. And it's 
I had a pretty terrible night sleeping last night. I mean, I slept, but I didn't get my deep sleep that I needed, what's called stage three delta sleep. And I felt that way when I woke up and when I looked at it, it actually said you I had zero deep sleep. Wow. So I was like, um, Fitbit doesn't quite go into that detail at all. So um, I've you know, seen a number great. of these. And the problem is we, unlike you, don't have anything to judge it against. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I've even used, there's a sleep is Android phone software mm -hmm. that you put on your bed and it, it records you snoring and stuff. But all of these things give you graphs that you look at them and you go, I don't know, am I tired? I, I only had four hours of deep sleep. Is that enough? Too much? Mm -hmm. So you think, given your ex experience as a sleep technician, this is pretty accurate, pretty reliable. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes over to the next few days. But for I've been using about three, four nights now, and uh, I, I, I generally like the results. Now, you still have to turn it on for the sleep mode. Uh, but from what I understand, Microsoft is going to have a fix out soon where it will automatically detect basically when you're going to sleep and go into that mode automatically. I believe Fitbit can now do that as well. So that's sort of the next generation of this sleep right. stuff. But I do find the information it provides to be more detailed than what some of the other uh, devices are out there on the market. Tell Especially me about, because of the heart rate. Tell me about charging because that's some, that really is a variable in all of these watches. Some sure. of them you have pogo pins. You have to put it in just the right place. Some are wireless charging. Some have a docking station. How do you charge this? So it comes with a uh, single cable. It's USB. It doesn't come with a little wall wart thing. So you either have to plug into a computer or if you have one, you can plug it into that. And it's simply a magnetic charger. It reminds me very much of an Apple design where it just attaches to the bottom and it will clip on and you don't need to press it. Uh, you can blindly do it and it'll just, it's got actually very strong magnets. And so it just attaches that way. But it is a proprietary solution. Correct. Yeah. They didn't use USB from what I understand because it's not it's water resistant, but not waterproof. And in order to get that water resistance standard, uh, I believe it's IP67, I think it is, you um, you can't use like a USB type connection. So they have their own proprietary one. Can you take this in the shower? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. They don't recommend immersing it in okay. liquid. You, you could, probably, to be honest, you could probably do it and it, you would survive. So if you forgot accidentally, I think it would be okay. But I, they don't recommend uh, immersing it in liquid. But washing the dishes, out in the rain, running, obviously in sports, it would be totally fine. Now, you can because it's got Cortana, I, I would guess it works best with Windows Phone. But does it work with other phones? So all of these functions work across all the devices except for Cortana, which because it's actually going through the phone uh, for the Cortana system. So Cortana isn't on it. You just invoke it through the phone. And from why, at least I understand when it comes to iOS and Android, those uh, services for Siri and Google Voice don't work through Bluetooth. It's sort of a, I don't think it's like open up for the APIs quite, uh, quite yet. But notifications work on Everything iOS else and Android. works. Oh, that's right. cool. Yeah, and notifications, it, phone calls. Is it blue, yeah. It's Bluetooth LE? What is, what is the communications method? You know, we're not 100% sure. Um, I think it's, I think you can do Bluetooth 4.0 LE, but it, uh, at least I tested it on some Windows phones that don't have LE enabled, and it still worked. Regular Bluetooth, then? Yeah, yeah. those were Windows phones, though, so perhaps Microsoft was doing some sort of short, uh, shortcut themselves. Right. But, yeah, so, um, it, but it should work across almost all devices that, Came out in the last year or two. So the pros and cons on this, and by the way, uh, it's not available yet, but will be available soon at Microsoft stores. Is that right? Well, it's in some stores. You can actually so you could try go it. and try it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they should. Uh, at the very least, they'll have it out on display. All the different. There's three different sizes: small, medium, and large. Uh, you can use the sizing chart online, but I definitely recommend going into a store and you can actually try it on and see how it fits. And if you're lucky, they may actually have some in stock. I I have heard that more stock is coming in the next two weeks or so, and. You know, you'll be able, and if you can go to your store, you can actually put yourself on a waiting list. You can also try online, although currently they're sold out. And, you know, there is a sort of a tight supply right now for these, but I think that'll start ramping up uh, in the next coming weeks. So the pros and cons in the Microsoft thing. Sure. So the pros, it's, uh, I think it's one of the most innovative devices out there. It's a perfect blend of the smart watch stuff along with the smart band stuff without being unrealistic. In other words, you get that two days battery life and, you know, 
You can use the different features like GPS and UV sensor. It's also cross compatible. So if you ever switch smartphones, it's going to work across Android, iOS, and Windows Phone almost exactly the same. So that's the pros. The cons, you know, $200, it's not the $99 Fitbit Flex, you know, so it's a little bit more expensive. I still think it's a fair price, but it's, you know, a little bit more on the high end. Battery life at two days is good, but it's not amazing, right? Fitbits can go seven days sometimes, even more than that. And so you almost never have to charge it. If you use a Misfit Shine, you just put a battery watch in there and it goes about six months. So if you're not into charging stuff, I don't find it terrible, but it's not ideal. But I think Microsoft found a nice balance. Every time I tell someone two days, that seems to be that cutoff. It's just enough where people won't get mad at it, but it's not ideal either. And it is fast charging, so it's not like you can. Right. You have to charge it all day to get it to go two days, which is pretty. Exactly. Pretty yeah. How about I mean, the like comfort? Said, is that a pro or a con? Is there? So I mean, it depends. Or some people will want something that just blends in, right? A Fitbit One is really tiny, and yeah. you can just clip it on your your pocket. Some people like the bands that are very light, like the Jawbone Up. You know, it just wraps around. You barely barely feel it. You know, for this, I find it totally comfortable. It doesn't chafe. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't slide around. It's an adjustable clasp. So once you get your size right, you can actually tighten it during exercise and loosen it during oh, casual wear. That's nice. And so you can find that perfect, you know, neutral zone of what you find comfortable. But I do recommend people try to go to the store and put it on and see how they feel about it. Buy, try, don't buy. <laughs> I say definitely buy, but this is obviously this category of devices is very competitive and there's a lot going on with it right now. The Apple has their smartwatch coming out, but that's not until next year. So I think if you want something for the holiday season, and this is that perfect blend, I think, of smartwatch stuff with fitness, I think it's a good buy just because the heart rate, the GPS, the UV sensor, and all the, you know, it's got 10 sensors in it. It's a pretty incredible piece of technology. It's one of the few that has GPS in the watch, not relying on the GPS from the phone. Which means, of course, you can leave your phone at home and go for a run and just have this on and it'll record the whole thing. So yeah, that's, that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Daniel Rubino, he's editor in chief at windowscentral.com and a buy for the Microsoft Band. Thank you. Are you going to keep it on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You no, fight with your girlfriend I'm... over who gets to keep it? Yeah. No, she's got one already oh, herself. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. No, we're, we're definitely like it. Thank you, Daniel. No problem. Thank it. you. It's great to have you on.